We're snuggling up and playing some board games. That's right. We're talking about our 10 favourite cosy board games. Hi, I'm Libby, this is Julian, and together we are Box Meeples. And yes, here we're here today in our hoodies, ready for some cosy time. And we're going to talk about our top 10 games that give us those cosy feelings. That's right. You know, on, uh, it's, it's a Sunday afternoon. You know, in winter, you might have a fire going. In yeah. summer, you might be out on your patio. What games do we like to play that involve kind of minimal forks are so familiar to us but are just nice and cozy and familiar and easy to play yeah and we got this idea uh thank you very much to rosie at cozy board games and to kim joy um and we saw them do a talk about cozy board games at aircon that we were at recently um and it's interesting hearing different takes on what cozy is like does it have to involve cute little critters you know is it something that's a lighter weight game it does does it tend to edge towards those kind of family friendly or not? And I think we sort of all came to the conclusion that, that cozy is what it is to you. It's something comfortable to you. So for us, you know, some of these games might be something that we're just super familiar with. So it feels easy to get it to the table, or it could be something that's small and light that we can sit on the sofa and get our little game trays out and snuggle up in our hoodies with our blankets on top. And it's a small, Button, so it feels like cozy when we're playing it. Um, so there's a bit, there'll be a bit of a combination between all of those things, and it's what cozy is to us. Yeah. Well, so grab your hoodie and let's get down to it. <laughs> so I've gone for I think the obvious. I've gone for Everdale. Now this is cozy for all sorts of reasons. One, it's full of really cute critters. Uh, you could fit in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from because we've got the everything Everdale all at once edition, um, we have this massive box. I mean, this doesn't necessarily look particularly cozy because it does look quite imposing. Yeah, like sometimes you can get a bit intimidated by a a big box. But um, but if, if you're new to it, get the normal edition and just see if it's your kind of thing. But I can't imagine it wouldn't be because it's super accessible. Uh, it's super adorable with all your yeah. little guys going out collecting squishy berries and bits of wood to ultimately populate a little village. Yes. Um, we know this incredibly well. We've played Everdale so much, um, starting with the original edition and adding various expansions. And we have our favourite different combinations of expansions. But what's really good about Everdale is that you can vary which expansions you use to have very different kind of play styles. Uh, so if you are playing with people who are you know, a bit intimidated by the box size, adding Spire Quest might be a bit much for them because it adds a lot of complexity to the game. However, you know, adding Polbrook might make things more palatable for them because they just adore frogs. Uh, it, you know, various different situations will call for different expansions, but they all contribute to, to scale the game appropriately. And uh, yeah, we don't have to think too much about this this game when we're playing it. We can just sit down, know the rules, and just enjoy some woodland fun. Yeah, and those creatures just too adorable. First up for me is one that you can sit on the sofa. It's quite a, a smallish footprint of game. And who doesn't like a dinosaur in a game? This is Draftosaurus, and you have these gorgeous little coloured, um, I mean, Sora meeple? Like, like... <laughs> Drug meeples? <laughs> dino dino meeples. Dino dino that, that'll be the one um, of different types, different colours, and you're trying to place them out in order to get the most amount of points. So you will be rolling dice in between to decide which pens you're allowed to put them in, which areas, um, whether you can put one in with a T Rex, whether you can't. Um, and you're sort of also paying attention to your map, but you're also trying to take away the colours that your opponent is trying to it trying to it take. It can sometimes be hate draft of source. <laughs> Um, and this is eight plus, so um, but I think we have played it with younger children, yeah. so it is pretty family friendly, um, and certainly a nice like chill out, not too long, have a nice cup of hot chocolate because we're getting proper cozy. This is not even a cup of tea; it's a, it's a good hot chocolate, 
Um, and yeah, you can just sit cross-legged on the sofa with your little map out and your cute little dinos that you're pulling out of a out of a bag each round. And there is also the summer and the winter map, mm. so you can extend the game if you want to. And it's a game yeah. that works really well on BGA, so you it could is. actually just play it in bed on your phones. <laughs> on your phones. <laughs> <laughs> but we like it in person. <laughs> Let's all go for a stroll in Japan. I'm going for Takedo. This is the duo version, the two-player version. We've also got the normal version as well. Um, and this game looks fantastic on the table. It does. It's, it does. And it's very simple to explain to new players. You're just going on a trip. If you're at the back of the queue, you take your turn. You can go as far as you want within a certain section. So as long as you are going before, you have to go to the meal bit. Yeah, um, well, that's that's true of that's true of Takedo. Yes. Yeah, different, slightly different rules in Takedo Jewel. But yeah, ultimately, that's your main decision. Well, how far along this road am I going to go on my turn? Because what are you focusing on collecting points for? Um, are you collecting paintings? Are you doing a little painting trip around mm. Japan where you're focusing on drawing those beautiful vistas? You might need to shop for some souvenirs. You, yeah, might need to. I mean, um, set collection in that, or maybe you just want to take some hot springs with some monkeys. You can you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, your only decision really is how far are you going to go along the path, and that's pretty much the explanation. As you are playing, it kind of comes very naturally when you start seeing the the different ways of scoring emerge. Uh, so then, on the second game, you can get much more competitive, and yep. it just looks so lovely on the table that it's it's difficult not to feel kind of warm and snuggly. Mm -hmm. So Takedo Duo. Is a slightly different beast. It's uh, I think it raises the com kind of complexity a little bit. Um, yeah, kind of, the, it's, you've almost got less things to collect because you've got three sort of main workers that are doing those different sets for you. But that makes the decision of which one you're doing and how you're keeping an eye on your opponent that little bit more crunchy. I think. Yeah, you're you're doing dice drafting, and it does feel a bit like a bit the same with draft a source. There is that opportunity to choose the dice that you know is going to really, <laughs> really help your opponent, just so they don't get that little advantage. Yeah. Um, you can play base to Kaido two players with a kind of automated third player character but this one is obviously much better at two players but either yeah. way it's a nice cozy sit down on the sofa yeah. or in fact a table because this is a bit of a table hog um and just just enjoy the journey this one you could do on trays yeah. that one yeah not so much not so much Next up for me is one, as I was saying at the beginning, a cosy game doesn't necessarily have to be super cutesy, you know, cartoony art, super nice creatures or very chill vibes like Takedo. It could be something you're just so familiar with, so comfortable with that you can just get to the table and play without having to look at the rule book. You, you know, you can set up easily between us, don't have to sort of chat. We just each know what each other's <laughs> doing. <laughs> Um, and for us, that is Lost Ruins of Arnak. We've played this game an awful lot, both on BGA and in person. Um, and I, I'm going to say base here for the cosy okay. element because um, although the first ex expansion with the, the new characters, I think we're more familiar with than the second expansion, which gives that... Um, kind of it's got a whole campaign in it yeah and we haven't change. finished that so obviously that's not quite so cozy because we're still learning about that but the base one for sure um i think is that real kind of relaxed chilled especially when it's just us two so like sunday afternoon or something um yeah just an easy go to no no brainer. Yeah, it's game. almost inst instinctive how we yeah. play. We, we, we've yeah. got our first moves. We know we're always going yeah, to do. Yeah, if I get to go first, I'm going to go and get the arrowhead because I know that that's what Julian that's wants. What Not because wants. I want it, because I don't want him to have it. Um, <laughs> but you know, it does. It does vary up when you have different items coming up, and that's what is good about the expansions. They do expand those decks as well. Um, yeah, and it's it's always interesting how the different deck that you build with the cards that come out changes how you choose to play the game. And I feel like it does have a lot of variety in it in terms of how much you're going to go out and focus on the guardians how much you're going to try and get up that track if you can try and do them sort of evenly which i think is what we try to do but there are games where i'll try to you know if things aren't going my way basically <laughs> then i will focus harder on 
a deck build and seeing how that progresses me later in the game. Um, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different strategies. And it's nice that the, um, the latest expansion is entirely cooperative. So we do kind of play together towards a yeah. you know, main aim, which is obviously makes it a little bit more cosy, yeah. less competitive. And of course, we put on like, you know, Indiana Jones, Lara Croft kind oh, of yeah, soundtrack I mean, music Sophia. and, you know, really dive into that kind of of our youth films kind of vibes. We all know I'll play it anywhere, I'll play it anytime. It's boop. Little tiny board. This is so cozy, it even has a squishy board. It does. You're playing does. on a bed. Mm -hmm. Can't get much more cozy than that. Uh, and with adorable cats and kittens, equally cozy, looks great, very simple to explain. And you can bolt out a game in sort of 10 minutes. Yeah. It can go up to a bit longer if you start getting really competitive. Um, this is the game that got you back into those two player. Yeah kind of uh, i don't know the the kind of chess like gaming yeah I, it really clicked for me and it did open well reopen doors that i thought were mm. closed because i thought i didn't enjoy that style of game but i really really enjoy boot particularly base boot but I, I know the the ghost cats add a certain element but it does slightly get a little bit confusing when you're playing with new players um but very much looking forward to christmas boot which we know oh, is on the horizon yes, with, yes. With boot is that boot the halls yes I think it is where you have cats and a christmas tree knocking off things so that's going to be very very cozy come the festive period but yeah there's not much more i can say about boot that i haven't said a million times i think can't get much more cozy than cats on a bed it's a key one So I'm going to segue from cats to rats. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite mice, is it? No, but to time. Almost there. I'm particularly rats that are really interested in the moon because, you know, the moon, that that's made of cheese. Rats like cheese. Rats do like cheese. And, yeah, and they're going to get to that moon using some, you know, some lemon juice, some bicarb, a bit of rubbish. And they become, they're going to become ratonauts. It's a well thought out plan. Ratonauts. And once they get to the moon and, you know, they eat the cheese moon, um, then they're going to... Yeah, they can't, can't, get, can't get back. Yeah. And they've also eaten the very thing they're standing on. It's not, yeah. it's not well thought out at all. Save a little bit just to hang out on. Or maybe the rockets will work there and back. I don't know. But this... <laughs> I mean, the theme alone is just adorable. Yeah, you are playing this rat. You can go around the burrow. You can go up the track to try to become a ratonaut. Um, You're collecting things on the way. And it has some really interesting um, mechanisms of when you're choosing to sort of restart. Um, you can come back to the starting point and then begin your journey again and things like the light bulbs that are in here that yeah. you're kind of working out how far you've got up and 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 how you move it's, so you can move more than one rat but only to the same type of area there's a lot of different bits and pieces going on but i mean it's a very cute cheese collecting rat game yeah um nice and thinky and again i think it's family weight yeah 10 plus um and yeah it's it's one that we absolutely loved when we first saw it. Yeah, yeah, it's, we we played it and we bought it instantly. I, what I do love about about First Rat is the idea that you can steal from a fog. Yes, yeah. Or you can just be yeah. honest. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have to grab something and run back. Or you can just you know buy it and keep going. It's all good. Yeah. And you, you, you're collecting rubbish and things. And there is lots of ways to score. You don't have to be a ratanaut. You can no. just start hiving up the cheese and hand it in for victory points. Um, but Just doing so, orbits of the burrow is also a great way of, of exactly. getting Exactly. So I it. like the way that there are lots of different ways to victory. I mean, if you're one of those rats that thinks... <laughs> foolish rat and all. <laughs> then you don't have to you don't have to go to yeah, space, you to to space. You, there's plenty of cheese around you can hive that away there was all sorts of disney and star wars games i could have added to this list i mean yeah. for us rebellion is actually a really cozy game although it's a very complicated game because again it's super familiar with us and it has so many nice memories associated with but yeah. i have gone for villainous so both star wars villainous and disney villainous I've got a disney villainous here with me um these games are again super accessible to us we know them yeah. really really well but they are quite varied so with the amount of expansions there are and each character that comes with expansion all plays 
very slightly differently. They've each got different powers and different goals and different cards. Uh, so when you intermix those of other opponents, villains does vary quite a lot every time you play it. Yeah, uh, and somehow they're really balanced. Yeah, it, it always goes down to a turn or two where you're always on the cusp of winning, but someone beats you to it. Yeah, or you know, a bad card draw is what stopped you from being victorious. Star Wars villains does add a little element of complexity if you find Disney villains a bit too light. But what's great about these? is they look so fantastic. All the card art is purpose-made for this. It's not repurposing art from films. It looks cohesive and lovely on the board. And yeah, some games can go on a little bit when you're both having to draft cards or get a certain card out of a deck. But more often than not, you're going to get this over and done within half an hour. And you've got your little player boards in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's enough interaction between you to both feel like you're playing the same game. It doesn't feel like multiplayer solitaire in any way because you have got those fake cards. Uh, but yeah, you can focus mainly on your board that's in front of you and not have to be on a big table to play this certainly two players which is our preferred way of playing villainous yeah and that fate deck really does add some spice to this game and it is one that we can fit on our uh, gaming lap trays for on the sofa if we so choose or certainly on the coffee table we've played it many a time yeah so a nice end of night game where we just want to play a quick game we know and you know we know we're gonna have a good time playing it exactly What's not cosy and cute about a panda? Especially a really hungry panda. Just wants to eat bamboo. He does. He does. He just, he's just a little bit hungry. And he doesn't mean to ruin the garden that the gardener has carefully maintained and has been growing his bamboo shoots really lovingly. He's just really hungry. <laughs> Um, but this is this is a lovely cute game where you are moving your gardener around, you are moving the panda around, trying to achieve different goals of different types of patterns to the types of sort of fields that you're doing um, in the different colours to create the pattern areas, making sure that they're all irrigated. Mm -hmm. And there'll be things where the panda wants to eat certain types and colours of bamboo. The, the gardener wants to get certain heights and styles of bamboo. And you're just each kind of creating an an envir a joint environment that will hopefully fulfill your own personal goals to get you that emperor's approval at the end of the game um and you know the panda is just adorable and obviously if you have the chibi's expansion you've also got lady panda got mommy panda and the little it's such an adorable game once it's, it's all on the table and yeah yeah we've played it with a, a range of age groups uh everyone kind of gets involved in this game and i think it's quite visceral it's quite obvious on the table what's going on mm -hmm. uh there is a certain element of you might just draw a scorecard that's very easy to achieve with what's out on the table um but by and large everyone's having a nice time and it often feels like again like we're talking about villainous always just about to do it it never feels like there's a big runaway leader and what i really like is the the dice that you get uh, which kind of essentially gives you one extra action each turn but you never really know what that's going to yeah. be and you're all sort of vying for the sun so you can choose what you want um but that's always keeps things a little bit mixed up and it's one of the games that we played as a couple kind of first mm -hmm. um i mean other than rebellion <laughs> Um, but you know, when when we were initially dating, we you know you can we took it to picnic parks and things like that, and sort of sat and played a game of Takenoko. So it has some some nice sort of sentimental feelings about it, as well as being a cute panda cozy game. Yeah, I would say that if you are having a cute game of Takenoko in a park, directly in the sunlight, wearing suntan lotion is a good idea. Definitely a good idea. Yeah. There's few things more chill and relaxing, it seems, than tending to a farm in Stardew Valley. I imagine, actually, in real life, farming is a lot more stressful than it's presented in these, <laughs> these kind of games. But in this, you just do stuff, particularly uh, in the video game in which this board game is based on. You know, you might do a bit of fishing. You might, Mining. You might do a bit of, yeah, scurrying around in, in caves trying to find useful items. You might just be looking after your little chickens and, and dinosaurs sometimes. They just might fall in love. Yeah. Might just might just romance someone, um, but this that all translates really well into a board game that is actually very hard to win. Uh, there is a goal you have to do when you're playing this game, and it's a cooperative game, so you're all kind of working towards the same goal. Um, but yeah, surprisingly hard to actually win 
the game. But the nice thing about it, in the process of trying to aim for that sometimes unobtainable goal, you are just doing some nice things. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, you can sit down, spend a couple of hours, it's quite a lengthy game, going through the various seasons, there'd be some nice festivals you can partake in. And at the end of it, you're like, I caught some fish and 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 grew some stuff. And and oh, Jojo Mart, they didn't they didn't take over Stardew Valley. It's just it's just adorable. It's just it very a cool. really relaxing, fun game to play, whether you win or not. Um, and yeah, it's. I it's, mean, we tried to strategize and write like this. These are our goals, so we just need to ignore this, this, and mm-hmm. this. Uh, and sometimes that works out, and and sometimes Some, it's like, oh, we should have got that at the start. It really would have helped us out. <laughs> yeah, getting the legendary items are always really useful in, in achieving the goals. But yeah. It takes a bit of time, but it's time well spent. I find it it a nice investment in time and Mm. in something very, very cosy. So I started this off with um, dinosaurs. Mm. And there's yet to have been any dragons. It's been a curious omission so far. It has. It has indeed. And and how can you do a cosy list without... The cosiest of all the cosy games. The cutest of dragons. And they're, you know, they're... They're hanging out in town. There's one that runs a bakery. One one does a mean steak. Mm-hmm. A mean steak. And and they are the cutest of dragons that you've ever seen. I mean, the art in this is incredible. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Um, of all these different different cute little dragons hanging out in town, having a cute little time. It's not a particularly um aggressive game between players and in fact you know you might go where someone wanted to 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 go on their turn but essentially wherever you do go you're improving someone somewhere for the next person yeah um eventually down down the line there's always something that you can do even if someone jumps you to the point of completing one of the missions in the middle and you're thinking oh i'm saving for that one and then there'll be another one that will come out that will use your resources so it's not it's not super aggressive it is super cute and you are bringing out more and more shops so there's more and more places for you to go you're getting more and more dragons into your hand as you're picking them up from the central park to help you out or from the thingy and those gold coins are just it's an incredible production um yeah flamecraft I think, I think it's my number one cosy. Which I think is why I've I, saved it. To I the do end. think it, if you think of a cosy game, you probably do think of Flamecraft. Yeah. I mean, Critter Kitchen's on the horizon. It which is. We are really looking forward to with with baking and 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 food making with adorable art by Sundar Tang, and it's so iconic and so familiar and so recognisable. Um, when you just see Flamecraft, you go, know, okay, I know what that game is um and yeah there's few games that have this absolute top end level of production that you get with Flamecraft. so yeah um, and we have played this on many a a sunday afternoon that's wet outside with your girls as well mm-hmm. just hanging around the table hanging out with dragons what gets cozier than that right well, let us know in the comments down below which cosy games have we not mentioned yes do get involved in the discussion and about the cosy games we have played which of those do you really enjoy and you go oh i need to get that back to the table which i always feel whenever we do one of these top 10 lists that yeah we, oh, there's 10 games now i want to play immediately away. <laughs> yeah even if it's not been very long it's like <laughs> Where's a good yes. place to get these cosy games? Um, for us, we like to go to our friendly local game store, which uh, here in the southeast of England is Chaos Cards. And of course, as usual, there is a code in the description which you can use at the checkout with them and get a few pennies off if you are buying online. And it's a good place to go shopping. But um, as always, if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen Libby and I before, please consider subscribing to us and ring the bell for notifications so you can be told when the next video is up. We try to post a video at least twice a week and we're doing these top 10 videos once a month. So if you have an idea for what top 10 video you would like us to do, please let us know in the comments down below. Yes, we'd love that too. But for now, we'll see you next time. Bye.